Hey gang, we're in here. Welcome on back to the Cade in another episode of Sports Saturday. Now, for this week, as we said, we're on a bit of a hiatus between our original season of NFL 2K2 and our eventual second season of NFL 2K2. And in the interim, we're going back and we're highlighting some games that we haven't visited yet and going to some avenues that, if you followed us last week, we really haven't gone into because we played Brian Lara Cricket, which was interesting uh, on multiple fronts. But this week, we realized we had not played a hockey game since episode 38, nearly half this series ago. We're now at episode 72 uh, since we started Sports Saturday. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to 2006. We're going to play our first 3D version of hockey. And we're going to go to a game that was released on both the PlayStation 2, the Xbox, and the Xbox 360. And was pretty much at the time the dominant rival against EA for their ubiquitous hockey franchise. We're going to play NHL 2K6. Now, 2K Sports was one of the main rivals that EA had in the early part of the 21st century. On multiple franchises, they came up with NFL games, they had NBA games, we played NBA 2K8 earlier in this series. But, to this point, the majority of NHL games we played were either 8-bit or 16-bit games. This is a 32-bit game. And it, like I said, it's the first one we're going to play in 3D. At least as far as 3D graphics go. I shouldn't say we're going to play in full 3D. You don't need glasses to play this. So, what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and just do an exhibition game today. And it should take up about a half an hour, which is what we usually try to hit on these episodes. So, let me set up my profile here first. And pick my favorite team. Well, I will take the Boston Bruins. Not gonna worry about saving it. And what we're gonna do is, like I said, we're just going to play an exhibition game. So, an exhibition game will be. Uh, so, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do what's gonna be. It's called an original six matchup. If you're not familiar with with hockey history, and I don't expect a lot of you to be, uh, when the NHL was first created back in the 1940s, it only consisted of six teams. You had the Boston Bruins, the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Montreal Canadiens, the Chicago Blackhawks, the New York Rangers, and the Philadelphia Flyers. That's it. And they were the only six teams in the league until, if I remember right, the mid-1960s before expansion started. So, based on that, every year the NHL likes to celebrate the original six in some form or another. So we'll keep it at five minute periods, even though it will say on the clock 20 minutes, the game speed will be accelerated. But in hockey, they have three 20 minute periods as opposed to four periods in uh, American football, basketball, and other time sports, uh, as opposed to things like European football, which is two 45 minute halves. So we'll leave everything else as it is. So penalties will be on. We will keep the speed as it is. Uh, we'll leave fighting alone and we will have icing on. Icing, if you're not familiar with it, we'll probably see it a couple of times as we go. I'll explain it at that stage. But these are our starting five for both sides. And let's get this underway as we are playing at the TD Bank Garden in Boston, Massachusetts, which is the successor to the legendary Boston Garden where the Bruins and also the Boston Celtics basketball team played for the majority of their history. Now, one thing about this game that I like already is that similar to NFL 2K2, that you have a bespoke broadcasting team. What they did for this version though was they replaced from 2K5 to 2K6 they swabbed out the ESPN ABC League team of Gary Thorne and Bill Clement with the Hockey Night in Canada team of Bob Cole and Harry Neal. So these were the guys who at the time, and I don't know if they still are, uh, if you know for sure, leave me a comment in uh, down below. If Cole and Neal are still the play-by-play -play and color guy for Hockey Night in Canada, which is very much an institution in the Great White North uh, along with their national sport. 
score against are usually down. So let's get this underway. So, the controls are pretty straightforward. To pass, you just hit the X button. Use the left stick to be able to control your player, and your player is the one that's got the circle underneath them. And then when you're on defense, the square button can be your poke check. Or you can use the circle button for a heavier check, although you risk garnishing a penalty if you're not careful. Try the one-timer, could not get there. He makes a centering pass. McGillie takes that puck through the zone to the point. Oh, a chance for Toronto. I have to admit, it's funny seeing uh, Joe Thornton, number 19 for the Bruins, only because he ended up going to San Jose as a free agent and was there longer as he gets the slap shot for the goal. Joe Thornton. His first of the year comes at 4.02. I should say first of the game. So he used to play in franchise modes and everything. But yeah, Thornton got his start in Boston with the Bruins. And for a long time, I actually had a Bruins sweater with his number on it. And no sooner did I get it than he went to San Jose and played pretty much the majority of his career after that with the Sharks. So we're on the board 1-0, and that certainly didn't take long. Now, one thing I will say up front is that I am not great at hockey in, only because I am not really up to understanding the full mechanics of how plays unfold. I'm the sort of guy who, as soon as I get across the ice, if I can get somebody in position, I'm going to let them take a crack at it. And hockey is a much more nuanced sport than that. It's all about position and timing more than it is about brute strength. Although, if you talk to anybody who's ever played hockey, the people who play it, both men and women, are incredible athletes for what they have to do. Because think about it. You are trying to move on ice on really thin skates. gets it out of the corner. You're going up and down. You're moving backwards like the guys, like my defensemen were. You have other guys in other colored sweaters trying to knock you on your butt every chance you get. And then you have to steer a little rubber puck with a curved stick. And then be able to get it past a guy who's essentially in full armor in front of a very small net. If you think that's easy... I would put that up as don't knock it till you try it. Because anybody who's ever played hockey will tell you it is not easy. And as a guy who never really was able to learn how to ice skate worth a damn myself, uh, you know, I grew up in New England in this time of the year when you would have stuff be all frosted over. It was not uncustom that we would go out to a local pond or one of the lakes that was nearby and we would try and go ice skating. And I was terrible at it. I just didn't have the balance. I mean, if you try to put me on a hockey rink, you might as well use me as the puck. As Bergeron skipped that one, skips it past Belfort, and it's 2 nothing. So that hit his leg pad and just matriculated on into the net. So it went off his shin pad and then off the bottom of his mitt and squirted into the net to light the lamp. So that didn't take long and it's 2 nothing. Now this game, when it came out, like I said, it came out on the PS2, the Xbox, and the Xbox 360. And it's not the most highly reviewed of the series. And 2K made NHL games from 2005 to 2014. So they had nearly a decade of work on it. Oh, we almost made it 3 nothing here in the opening period. By giving Joe just a little bit more leeway on that shot than the route might have been on. 
Oh, a chance for Toronto now. Over to Roberts from McGilney. It's fed back to the point. A booming hit. Who rang it off the pipe? Oh, and the puck hits a post. He's getting a little cocky on this one. He's got the goal post helping him. The shooters are starting to mutter to themselves. Whoa, just skim that one wide. Clean holds him along the glass. I said we need to do a shift change here. Now, when I say a shift change, if you're not familiar with how the sport of hockey works, from McGilney, Roberts, the puck goes into the corner. While you have five guys on the ice, a team is actually constructed of about 20 to 25 guys. And what they do is they work in what are called shifts. So you usually have your best players on your front line or your primary line, and oh, did he launch that sucker! Gary Roberts with a howitzer. And Toronto's on the board 2-1. And that's after he got bumped. But anyway, as players are on the ice, they get tired. And what they will do is they will alternate positions. So fresh guys will come off the bench as tired guys will go take a seat. And that happens a couple of dozen times a game. So when you look at how long guys actually play during a 60-minute hockey game, they don't necessarily play all that much, but it's because they're always alternating. Because you always need fresh bodies on the ice, both to defend and attack. As Thornton was right there, and Belfour shut the door. Trying to put that one through, didn't do it. And that's the end of the first. So we put two on the board. But Toronto comes back with one of their own. As we go to intermission before the second period. Now while I have that here. Like I said. Of the three. Uh, the PS2 and the Xbox version were considered the better versions of the Xbox 360. And the Xbox was actually slightly rated higher on Metacritic. 83 out of 100 to PS2's 81 out of 100. Overall, this game was ranked fairly highly by all the publications of the time. Eurogamer, Game Informer, GameSpot, GameZone, IGN, all gave between 8 and 9 out of 10. GamePro gave it 4 out of 5. GameSpy, 4.5 out of 5. The only publication that really didn't look highly on this game as a whole was Electronic Gaming Monthly. It gave both the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox version just under 7 out of 10. But this was the first game that, in case of a tie, it implemented what was new at the time, which is the shootout system, which rather than playing sudden death overtime, they would essentially go to what are like penalty kicks in soccer. And Raycroft having to stand on his head right there. Now, the computer will automatically control the goalie, but it's got limits. It's fed back to the point. Harry, sometimes crowds are tentative. Only a one goal lead. But not tonight. There is nothing tentative about this crowd. Nope. They are in this game. Samsonov tries to rip one. No good. And this is going to come back down the ice, and Belfour will corral it. He could have let that go, and that might have been ice. All right, let's stop and set up a look. Except that went offside. And it's taken in the defending zone. So how offside works in hockey is that the first, the guy with the puck has to be the first one across that blue line. If somebody else crosses that blue line before the puck does, then that's offside. He brings it up. Back to the point. Oh, and Belfour makes the save. His team down a goal right now. They can't give up another one. It's sent to the right wing. And Axelson tried to put one in the corner. The Couldn't do it. Wing. Over to Nolan. 
He controls the puck along the board. He carries it over the blue line. John Gill. What great positioning with the blocker hand. He made the save off that one-timer, and it was a great save. So one-timer, if you're not familiar with that term, is when a offensive player will pass over to somebody who is lined up for a slap shot. It's passed to the point. The Maple Leafs are back a goal now, still trailing after going into the break. And coming back for the second period. So what you're doing is you're basically putting it up on a tee for whoever it is that's going to be on the receiving end of the pass to just absolutely blast it. Oh, well, we're not at it, too. Darcy Tucker. The assist from Nolan and McCabe. And we're all square at 2-2. Now, hockey isn't normally a high-scoring game. But like most sports, they've tried to put an emphasis on offense in recent years. Would be nice if my guys would actually be able to follow the puck a little bit better. I think the AI is a little wonky in this game. Ooh, and that almost went into the net if Belfort didn't pounce on it. McCabe knocks the puck to the center. Taken into the zone by Toronto. All right, so we got about five and a half minutes to go here in the second. No, I want to send it down. He feeds it up the right side. Across the blue line. All right, Sergey gets it. Oh, I tried to pass it in for Thornton. It was close to the net. Couldn't get it there. All right, so he hung on to it. Usually they don't wait for it to go that long before they blow the whistle. But the goalie can opt to hold on to it and force a face-off, which is good if you need to do a shift change. All right, let's see what we can do here. There we go. Samuelson puts us up 3-2. That's what I want. I want him to follow me just enough to leave that gap open. And Samuelson's right there and just flicks it on in. Now, something I will say about games like this, and this applies to pretty much every major franchise that is out there for sports games, is that the best games do a great mix of what you see on TV, because the majority of people consume their sports on TV around the world. That's nothing new. Especially even now with like digital streaming and stuff like that. But it's still done through the same general user interface. But it's being able to combine that with your ability to be a player on the field, or in this case, on the ice. And taking part in the action. Ah! Okay, so we get to the end of the second. So we still lead by a goal going to the third. Now, in terms of graphics and everything, I actually really like the presentation of this game. I like the fact that the, the rink is really big and really wide, and it's easy to follow along with the players and the action, even though not unlike watching an actual hockey game on TV. Trying to track the puck itself can be difficult. Because, again, a hockey puck is not very big. It's, I think about the size of a... If I remember right, it's the circumference of a softball, if not a little bit smaller. 
And with how big these guys are and how much they can whip that puck back and forth across the ice, like so on that faceoff. All right, go get it. Let's get moving down the ice here. And Thornton redirected that as he got knocked down. And I think we got a, yep, two-minute penalty for slashing. So Brian McCabe is going to spend two minutes in the box. That puts us on a power play. So power play, if you're not familiar with it, is that we will have a five-on-four advantage on the ice, not including the goalies. So McCabe will have to stay in the box for two minutes. And Toronto, their whole plan now is to make sure we don't score. And our plan is to use our numbers to make sure we do. If we score, then McCabe will come out because the penalty will be over because it will basically be served by us getting the goal. If they hold on, then we'll go back to five on five at the end of the two minutes and no one will be the wiser. Yeah, go get the puck gone, Sean. Ah, we dumped it in. This might be icing. Yep. So icing is if you send the puck into the alternating zone, before you cross the red line and the opposing team gets it in their zone, then it's called icing. It's brought all the way back just to the side of our goal for the next faceoff. It discourages you from wanting to do that. Raycroft saves it. His team's got a one goal advantage right now. Thornton through the zone. Oh, and here come the and Samson trying to fire one in from the edge. All right, so we got 30 seconds on this power play. We better make it count. Ring it off the pipe! How that one didn't go, I have no idea. So the penalty ends. It was effectively killed by the Maple Leafs. All right. Oh, it had the breakaway, but then they jumped on it. Oh, and we're tied up again. My guys couldn't get over there fast enough. We're all square at three with 12-14 to go in this match. Okay. I have to remember we have plays that we can call. All right, now we got to bring everybody back across so we negate the offside. And now Boston with it across the blue line. They get in the way of the one timer. The Leafs are right where they want to be at this point in the game. They've been working all night and are deciding now is the time to strike. We're all tied in the final frame. Anything you'd like to say here, Harry? The scoreboard may show an even battle. Ah. But this isn't the case when it comes to physical. Trying to find ways to, to skirt passes through is not them. easy. Start laying down some hips if they want to take the lead. Wow, terrific poke check at center ice. Oh, and there they go, the Bruins in the rush. Hibbert getting some light abuse close to the slash. There we go. Comes in, now I get a little bit of juice moving. Brings the puck up. Bergeron from Axelson has his one time shot blocked. He feeds it up. The Try to one time to the wrong guy. Pass the blue line. And Raycroft stops it going low left side. Nothing doing there. Oh, and the Bruins have a chance. He stops it, but it's padded away. And we get the goal. 
Bergeron tried to get it. Axelson with a rebound, and now we're up 4-3. And was perfectly screened by both Bergeron and whoever that Maple Leaf was. So now we just got to keep him from scoring again the next 5 minutes and 46 seconds. And we'll get out of here with a win. And I don't remember what our current record is in Sports Saturday games. Simply because we've been playing NFL 2K2 for so long. That our win-loss record's kind of gone by the wayside. But I know it's been a while since we won a hockey game here. And that's offside. The Bruins are called for offside. Here comes the faceoff to start the action again. We won eight faceoffs. The Toronto's five. And Toronto Make it eight six. Over to the right wing. The shot. The shot's blocked. Good coverage on the shooter. He brings the puck through the zone. It's shot from center ice, and he stops it with the right pad. We gotta be careful we don't hit the goalie. That can be called interference. So the players cannot intentionally hit the goalie. Here come the Maple Leafs for the chance. And a bad save by Raycroft. There it is, Boston on the rush. Fired. Denied a terrific stop to shut down that man. And yeah, that got neglected out of the way. Whew. All right. Get him back over there. Clear it out. Under a minute to go. Just sent that one wide. And that will do it. So it was a nail biter till the end, but we hang on and get the win over the Maple Leafs 4 3. And that, everybody, is NHL 2K6 for the PlayStation 2. And again, you can also play this on the Xbox and the Xbox 360, although the Xbox 360 is the lower rated version of this game. Now, let's get our usual stuff out of the way. Is this a good game? Yeah, I would say so. You know, for a first time go of it, you give me a little bit more time to learn the mechanics and the nuances of how this game operates. You pop me in a franchise mode and I could probably get ready to have a rip roaring good time. I will say this, I do very much like, as I stated during the game, I like the graphic presentation of it. I like the focus on trying to make it like a actual NHL TV broadcast. Although, in that regard, the camera angle is different because you're not looking up and down the ice. It goes from left to right and right to left uh, for a TV broadcast of a hockey game. But be that as it may, that doesn't take away anything for me because it's the similar camera angle that I'm used to seeing in everything going back to EA's NHL games from the Genesis and Super Nintendo 16-bit era. Is this a game they can make today? Absolutely. I mean, they're still making NHL games just like they're making NFL games and Major League Baseball games and NBA games and FIFA games. But unfortunately, 2K Sports no longer has the rights to make this particular franchise. So, not having a whole lot of experience in seeing what EA has done with NHL. If they've done anything to form with what they've done with Madden, then I would imagine at this point it's fairly polarizing. Because unfortunately EA has gotten into the all too familiar territory of slapping new paint on old board. Uh, of keeping the mechanics and everything it was for the last five, six, ten games and just changing just enough to make it seem like a brand new game every year. And they've been exposed for that. And they've been called out for that. And I know there's a, a documentary that's coming up really soon uh, about the creation of John Madden football from EA. And that's a point of contention in there is apparently they're going to address that. But if you have experience playing these games, leave a comment below. Let me know which one did you like better. Did you like the 2K version? Did you like the EA version? Did you like an entirely different version? What's your experience and what do you think the best hockey game you ever played was? And if you don't limit it to just the 32-bit generation, cross the board. Let me know. I'd be curious to see how many people would say NHL 94 because that's usually considered to be 
the best one ever done for the Sega Genesis, but that was 30 years ago, and there was a lot of stuff that was made between then and now. Uh, if you want to try this game out, you can absolutely do it. I'm using the PCSX 2.0 emulator. It's a free emulator. And these games aren't hard to find if you really go looking for them. And if you're interested in doing a throwback game, you can't do... You certainly can do worse than this game. Uh, but it would be hard to press, I think, to find much better. So... Now, again, that's Sports Saturday for this week. Thank you very much for tuning in. As always, if you've enjoyed the comment or content on the channel, it's a comment. You know what to do. Uh, been a long week. Uh, be sure to make sh strike that, reverse it. Make sure you tune in for Sucker Bun Sunday tomorrow, where we play a classic fighting or fighting platform-based game from the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth generation. Also, be sure to tune in to our ongoing playthrough of Super Robot Wars Alpha Guide. We have new episodes of that that are kicking up every Monday and Wednesday. And then, like we said uh, last week, once we get through the Thanksgiving week and into early December, uh, we will get started with Season 2 of NFL 2K2 for the sake of Dreamcast and our great what-if scenario of creating the New England Patriots dynasty without the existence of Tom Brady. We're one Super Bowl down, and now we're ready to get into Season 2 with all new players. So I'll be curious to see how that all unfolds. Be sure to follow us on social media through Instagram and threads at Runs Retrocade. Help spread the word about us as we continue to build this channel and make it bigger and better. Also, watch that space because we are looking to get a new social media portal put up on Blue Sky. So uh, I know everybody's leaning that way. And as I am very much not interested in doing anything in the old uh, Twitter X sphere, uh, as is a lot of other people, we're always looking for new pastures to get people's attention and have them check us out. Uh, but in the meantime, my name is Ronan. It's been great to spend this sports Saturday with you. Be safe, be well, happy gaming. We'll talk to you tomorrow for another Sucker Punch Sunday. Bye.